Okay, guys, welcome to our call tonight. We are so excited that you're here to join us and learn all about the amazing Tower Gardens and helping get them into schools and other educational um, places to bring more awareness to food and nutrition to our community. So my name is Sarah Beardmore and I'm really excited. I've got a few friends on with me tonight that are um, experts, I think anyways, about getting um, towers into um, everywhere from elementary to middle school, high school, all the way up to former education in college. So I'm just going to um, introduce my speakers and um, if they can give me a wave across the screen, if you guys want to put your view in um, participant or gallery view, you'll be able to see them. So give a wave to Miss Kim Barker and say hi, Kim. She's an Arizona native army wife, mom of two amazing boys, and she graduated from ASU with a BS in exercise in science. And she is the new co-owner of Frontier Urban Farms. How exciting is that? And then we have Miss Becky Black over there. Give us a wave, Becky. Becky's a mom of two boys, and she has a background in resort and um, hotel and food. And she believes that every child deserves access to fresh, real fruit food. And through Tower Garden, she's been able to bring that to her community and even more. And then I'm going to, um, I have to read Henry's. This is quite, I, I, I thought I'd have a little fun with this. Okay. So I'm going to actually, Henry, you're going on the spotlight. And for those of you um, who were in my chat group earlier, you know why. Henry, been with Juice Plus Tower Gardens for three years. He's a native um, to Ohio, Illinois, Ohio State University, microbiology, master of education, marching band. He's taught human anatomy and physiology, chemistry, environmental sciences, biology, coach volleyball, softball, marching assistant director, drug and alcohol prevention advisor, works with heart attack and um, center in, sorry, stroke prevention center and complete health dentistry. He supports their patients in shifting into a preventative medical dental mindset rather than a uh, reactive one. Enjoys building community, volleyball, game nights, snowboarding, motorcycles, dancing, officiating weddings, just in case you didn't need, he needed some more to do, reading to playing in his own baby nieces and nephews, backpacking, climbing, hosting friends for meals, and healthy eating gatherings. Okay, there's more and more and more. And the reason why I read his is because he is a single bachelor, okay? So I felt the need to read his whole, his whole repertoire just in case. So anyways, guys, thank you so much. Um, I just want to say a few things for those who may be on tonight and don't know how amazing the Tower Gardens are, you guys are going to learn all about getting Tower Gardens into schools and why and all of the great details, but maybe you're watching this as a recording or you're a guest on here tonight and you've never even seen the Tower Garden. We don't have slides tonight. We will make sure that we get you some content, some digital content in your hands, but Tower Gardens are an incredible way, a sustainable way to grow your own food. They grow food um, three times faster than a traditional garden. They use aeroponic technology, which means no soil, no weeding, um, no, you know, getting dirty, if you will, less bugs, and it's recycled water. And it's a very small two and a half foot by two and a half foot space, and you can grow up. So um, if you're just learning about towers for the very first time, we'll get you some tower content. But tonight we're gonna go ahead and go through some of our questions about getting tower gardens into school. So let me just um, pull up my notes because we have lots of fabulous questions. And we're gonna do this event like a panel event. So it's just gonna go across. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just ask, and I'm going to just go in this order. I'm going to start with Kim, and then it's going to go Becky and Henry. And I'm going to take myself off of spotlight so everybody can be highlighted. So go ahead and unmute your lines, my three speakers, unless you've got background. Um, how have you seen the towers impact classrooms firsthand? Kim? Yeah, I'm sorry if there is some background noise. Our new puppy has found some nighttime energy. So um, I have firsthand seen towers impacting on, on a huge scale. So um, one of the schools that I work with in Chandler, Ryan Elementary, they got an A plus right rating after implementing towers, um, which is huge to, to be an A plus school. Um, I've also seen one of my schools, um, Patterson Elementary, they got towers for all of their third grade classes because here in the state of Arizona, our curriculum uh, for science in third grade is plant life cycle. And so all of their third grade classes implemented towers and um, 
everyone else at the school loved them so much that they added two more towers to their library and front office and started a garden club. And so anyone in the school could apply to be in the garden club and they only had 20 spots and received over 200 applicants. Wow, that's fabulous. Amazing. Um, Becky, if you want to go ahead and unmute and um, just to kind of maybe just share a little bit of your story too, Becky, and we won't have everybody answer every single question. I just thought this one was important. So just quickly share your story so people know, because um, yours is a little bit different. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a country girl at heart, grew up on a farm. I knew where all of my food was coming from. Fast forward, I moved to the city of Ottawa and I have zero access to land or soil. And I worked in the hospitality industry, as Sarah said, and I spent the last 10 years of my career at Carleton University where I managed three cafeterias. And the food that was coming in, they did a really great job. But as soon as exam time started, you know, Coca-Cola would come in and start pushing the monster drinks and all of these shitty drinks, pardon me. And it just infuriated me. And I knew, so when the towers were introduced to me, I just... But I just blew up. I'm like, oh my God, we have to get these into the university. And like, again, they knew me, they trusted me and they took a chance on me and we ordered three, the bundle family pack. And we were able to get them into the main dining hall where the main food plan was. And through that, I've done a lot of events. I've loved tower gardens all over the city and to farmers markets and to little community get togethers. And a private donor, somebody approached me about um, getting tower hours into schools and at the first at first I had no clue how many and um it was through the Ottawa Network for Education, and my first order was for 16 tower gardens. And I found out it was a four year funded project. So the following year it was 18, the following year it was 27. And then through that, a healthy kids program through the city of Ottawa ordered 10. And then, so they're all over, they're in, they're in the university, they're in schools, they're in community centers with refugees that have never, that do not have access to fresh produce. So. Yeah, that, that's how I was able to get them into a lot of schools. And um, yeah, that's pretty much in a nutshell. Amazing. I love that. I love that. And Henry, how about you? What kind of impact have you um, seen Tower Gardens, you know, in all the different, because Henry, you can share a little too, you, you know, it hasn't just been schools for you as well, right? Or elementary right. schools, pardon me. pardon me, yes. Right. Um, first of all, if just to get the elephant out of the room, I scratched my eye playing sand volleyball, so that's why my eye is red. Okay, <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> just in case you're staring at it, um, you can stare at it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I first entered uh, the Juice Plus Company and Tower Gardens with three tower gardens in my own classroom when I was teaching environmental sciences and anatomy and physiology. But since then, uh, like just today, I was over at an assisted living um, uh, residence called Kemper House. Uh, Alzheimer's and dementia. They are combating the, the effects of uh, these different diseases using nutrition. Um, so they have tower gardens over there. Um, Ronald McDonald House, um, we have them all over the place in like, um, like in, uh, in Columbus schools, there's 52 of them uh, that we have a mobile uh, kitchen unit that the kids can take out to the community and they can show the community how the, the, the produce not in, not only is just being grown, but how to prepare it um, and the texture and taste and all that kind of good, good stuff. So uh, whether it's community centers, uh, firehouses, um, or homeless shelters, um, you know, it's not just isolated to educational settings in schools, it's education across the board of all ages. Wow, that is just absolutely amazing. It gives us um, just the mind to think and dream and about all the different places in our own communities that we can um, enhance with the power of good, clean nutrition, right? Um, so while I have you, Henry, I'm going to ask you this. Being that you were, you know, you brought three towers into your own school, right? Um, you know, generally speaking, now that you're out in, in bringing them into other schools, who do you think to first approach? Um, with that, you know, can, like, do you have to have a connection with somebody? Like, what is your kind of, and I know each of you may have a different path of how you do things. And so if somebody else has a different way of doing it, please do share. Um, but Henry, like, what is your first approach um, when going with the school? What, 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 what do you do? Yeah, so uh, that's a great question, Sarah. Um, you know, a lot of us get bombarded with, uh, as, as a teacher, you get bombarded with um, emails of people selling you stuff. So instead of doing a cold call, it's always best to have a, a personal connection. And all of us knows, know a teacher. 
So whether it's a science teacher or a teacher that can actually use a tower garden in his or her classroom, they know someone that can use a tower garden or, uh, you know, in their classroom. So um, the way that I go about it is I ask my teachers if they can connect me on a three-way chat, whether it's on Facebook, text, an email. Um, I prefer to, uh, Facebook because then that other teacher uh, or administrator, counselor, whoever can stalk me on Facebook and see that I'm legit rather than just, you know, like a, a, a sleazeball salesman or something like that. Right. And so they can see us working with kids on our, uh, on our uh, Facebook profiles and stuff. Um, another thing that I like to do is uh, start with the teacher or a parent. Um, and then once uh, the, uh, the educator is, it, you know, sees the value in it um, and always keep it like student centered, right? Everything is student centered. It's student learning. It's project based. Um, that's the verbiage that, uh, that, that we use in the classroom these days. Um, then finding funding is secondary because you can simply go to the Rotary Club, to the P, uh, PTO or PTA, whatever your school calls it, um, or uh, some sort of grant locally. Like we got a grant from Bob Evans of all places, right? <laughs> Lord knows that they need it all over there. So um, they're like, yeah, we want to make it a positive impact. Do you have any teachers? Well, of course, I already had teachers lined up. And so they said, all right, we'll donate $1,000 and that's it. So start with the teacher and then do the funding. Wow, okay. that's all. Great, great advice. Um, I might be jumping all over. I'm kind of going with my best instinct here just because Becky, you got um, a different grant program Father Grant, I think. We'll talk more about that. Um, Kim, how about you? What, uh, just on an elementary school level or, you know, um, secondary maybe, but what, what are your ways? Yeah, so um, Chase, you're just gonna have to wait, bud. Um, sorry, love, love having everyone at home. Um, so, sorry. Path to get them in this room. That's okay. I'll, re I'll review the question. <laughs> Repeat the question, teacher. Um, question is, uh, how, what's your first step? Like, where are you connecting? Obviously, you're, you went with your kids' schools. Like, yes. How did you get connected? Yes, thank you. Thank you for re refreshing my memory. Um, I, I just, like, went with the relationship aspect. And so I noticed at the school that there were boxed gardens. And so at the Harvest Festival, I sought out the principal and just started the conversation of, hey, we're new to the school. I introduced myself. I see that there's boxed gardens. That's so great. Um, who takes care of them? Or do all the kids help out? I just started being really interested and curious about her boxed gardens. And then I ended it by asking, would you be interested in learning about how you can grow a garden vertically inside the classroom? And she said, yes, send me information. Such a simple, powerful question. And keep in mind, you know, the verbiage that Henry mentioned, right? Student centered. What was some of that other verbiage? Um, just one more time for us, Henry. STEM. STEM yeah. Project based learning. Yeah, project based learning. And I would like to point out I'm in Canada. It's freezing and it snows here. So we don't get to grow outdoors. So if anyone from Canada is watching this, that is the most amazing feature. Are you kidding me? We can start our gardens in September and keep going all year round. That is huge for us. So keep that in mind as well. Well, since I have you on Becky, um, I know that your process, cause you had a private donor, yeah. was there any other experiences where you needed to source out and share towers somewhere? Is, was there a way that you did that, especially at that higher um, level of education? Yeah, so I mean, well, I, I have a grant that I use. It's called the wholekidsfoundation.org. It's a $3,000 grant and it's available, I believe, to you guys in the States as well. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. It's amazing. It's got salad bar grants. It's got, it's, it's just wonderful. Um, and yeah, I think I'm losing my Let's turn. talk about that for a second. Because yeah. right? that comes up a lot. I mean, I, yes, thanks Kim for putting yeah. that in the chat. And I have heard about that one, actually. So just for those of us on this call 
who have never dealt with a grant program, don't understand them, think that every tower garden should be given away for free into the schools. That doesn't happen, okay? The, the tower garden company is not giving tower gardens away. Unless you have a boys and girls club, if you're in the U.S., then they do. Same with Canada. Okay? You can be, get one in there. So if, if you want to start getting into the community, that's an option. So tell us about grants. So these companies, they want to help kids, you know, they need to give money away, obviously. And so there's different grant programs out there. Becky, can you speak to grants a little bit? Well, I don't write them. I'm going to tell you that. I, I'm very clear. I'm like, I'm just, I, my background is not in grants. I'm not privy to a lot of the information as well that is required for the grant. And I've never had any school complain about that. The, they, the principal gets involved usually. And I just want to get you guys, like, get creative out there. Think of local businesses in your community. Who would not want to donate a tower garden to a school? And then let's get creative with the marketing and say, you know what, I'll buy a wrap for the base of your tower garden saying that this was sponsored by Volkswagen. This was sponsored by whatever. They're like, that's another just creative way. What's, what's $2,000 for these businesses? Nothing. Yeah. So just, to, just an idea, so. Great idea, I love it. Yeah. Um, Henry, Kim, anything um, that you guys can share on that? Um, so I just want to pop in. So I am working closely with a, um, a nonprofit based out of Texas and they're called Independence Garden. And from, I'll have to check my dates, but I want to say January to May, they're giving away a free garden per month. Um, and all, all schools, any school anywhere can sign up for this. And what they're doing is asking for your school to participate in what they call it, the come and eat it program. And what they do is they have a local chef. Um, actually, nowadays, it doesn't even have to be local. It's all on Zoom. So they have a chef that has a, a very simple, fresh menu that they're preparing. The school will have the ingredients and the kids make it alongside with the chef. And so the school with the most participation um, we'll get the, the garden donated to them. Fabulous. Love that. Uh, anything on that, Henry, on grants that you have that maybe wasn't shared? Yeah. Um, so basically most grants are going to be written the same way. So once you have a grant that is written for a tower garden, then it's as simple as copy, paste, copy, paste, and cater it to your grade level. Um, so Personally, I've never written a grant from scratch myself, um, but I help teachers with that because I have past grants that you can simply take the verbiage. So for those of us who have never been in this, like, you know, I think, okay, they're giving away grants. When you say write a grant, maybe explain that process. Because that, if I don't understand the process of everything, I won't make a move. I don't know if there's anybody else on this call, but not having the knowledge, I won't take the step. I'll be like a deer in the headlight. Um, so w what do you mean writing a grant, like asking for money from these companies? you got to write a, a plea letter or something? <laughs> yeah. So basically, um, it's these companies or maybe the yeah. principal or someone has, um, you know, a lump sum of money that they want to give it away. And so a bunch of people, um, that, uh, that are applying for it, you can usually print off the application. Um, say what you're intending to use it for. There's usually a requirement um, or a set of requirements uh, that you have to fall within. And so it might say, it's, this is used for a, uh, a public grant for, let's say, $1,000 to be used in a public school or a nonprofit um, for something to do with sustainability. And so uh, they have certain questions that you would just answer in terms of this is how the expected outcomes for my students are going to look with, uh, look like, and this is how I'm going to follow through, this is how long it's gonna take, um, and I'll take some pictures to show you, and um, sometimes um, they'll, those grants will also come with some sort of um, like uh, requirement for recognition, just to let us know how Bob Evans, for instance, is going to uh, benefit by their name being on the tower garden, something like that. So it's very simple. It's just an application. Got it. Got it. Is there a, how, you just start looking 
online for tower or for gardening grants or sustainability grants, just start doing a search. I, I know that whole, whatever that first one was that you guys shared. I, I remember just stumbling up, you know, when, when I was looking at one point, I found that. So, oh, there you go. Um, yeah. Okay. Kim's put some info in the chat. Thank you. All right. So, and either any of you guys can unmute and just go at your own um, pace with this, but PTOs, do PTOs help? Do you guys do fundraisers? You know, obviously we can go, we talked about grants, we talked about community, and I, I guess it really just depends on how many towers the school wants to bring in. One tower is pretty easy to cover, but if you get in to like multiple towers, it gets a little bit more costly. So what are some other things that they're, they're doing? Is the PTO helping out? Are people doing fundraising? If so, what does that look like? So we, um, the schools that I work with, the towers are, are in the classroom. And so there's one class typically per tower and, um, and they have, it's just integrated into all of the different curriculums. And so just like any other classroom job, the line leader, the door holder, they, they have like a, a horticulturist and they're doing all of the things for the upkeep of the tower. Um, and so with saying that, they are able to use certain funds from different departments to fund um, those like classroom projects. And so um, I've had the PTL or the PTO that will help fund that classroom project. Um, the teachers will have like basket money or extra funds that they get donated to them. Um, I've had the school use tax credit money. So parents will donate money towards the school is different than like a, a extracurricular donation um, that you can make towards a public school. And so they have that tax credit money. And so there's lots of money out there. Um, it's getting creative. And then there's monies set aside for clubs as well. So that's why they were able to buy the PTL paid for the third grade classes. And then they were able to use club money to buy more. Fabulous. Great. Anything with you, Becky, on that one? Yeah, just, uh, yeah, parent council is huge for sure. Um, I've never done any fundraising, but it's not hard. I mean, I remember Melissa High talking about back in the day when you could go in, doing the shakes, like making, you know, doing a shake fundraiser and you can do anything. You can do rain barrels, there's fundraising, you know, fundraising, selling rain barrels and all the money, you know, you could ask the parents to donate some money, <laughs> right? Just from their I'm pocket. Rain barrels in Arizona. Like, I know, sorry. Here. <laughs> that would be funny. I know, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 you're fine because we have lots of communities on this call. Okay, awesome. So upkeep for schools, this is gonna be a question that comes up because teachers don't have a lot of extra time, right? They're asked to do a lot of things, especially right now, they're multitasking online, in school, marking grades, all that stuff. What is the upkeep and how is it best managed? And within that kind of question, I'm gonna ask you, yeah, I guess I will stick with that. What about the upkeep for the, for the teachers in class? We'll start with, uh, we'll go with Henry. Cool, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so you definitely want to find a champion in the school because it's way too much for you to be attending uh, all of these tower gardens, right? Especially if you start getting multiple school districts, uh, drive time and all that. Um, so uh, as a teacher uh, who was in charge of all the animals in our school, <laughs> um, then I found kids to really take ownership of each of the, the aquariums and terrariums and all that kind of stuff. It's the same thing with the tower gardens. And so our, uh, I mentioned in the chat here, a term called cross curriculum, and that's a buzzword in the classroom. Cross curriculum means um, that it's not just for one classroom. Um, so it's important that uh, you, know, you get a dolly and it's so worth getting that dolly so you can go from the biology classrooms to the environmental science classrooms down to the special ed and so our special ed kids um, they will refill the basin they'll do the uh, ph indicator because it's just a color uh, coded strip of paper um, and 
the biology students design the experiments, the environmental science classes they harvest and maintain. It's the business classes that um, take care of the, uh, the financial pieces and selling the extra produce that the kids don't want to take home to the teachers. Foods and fitness, global gourmet classes, um, take the, uh, the produce, the peppers and tomatoes and everything and put it onto their foods. Uh, so the teacher that took over the tower gardens for me when I left the classroom permanently does barely any work on the tower gardens herself. Everything is student run. Wow. And so you choose a champion in the school to be in charge, the, ch the, the teacher delegates it to the students. Fabulous. Anything other than that um, from our other two guests tonight? Always have a champion. I was in Tower Garden Jail for a little while. <laughs> I call it Tower Garden Jail. Um, and I, I don't know, I got to the point where, you know, I will go and help set it up and I'll do all that stuff, but my time is money. So I created maintenance packages. And there's a lot of schools that are like, oh my God, I will totally take that. So it's a tear down package. And then I'll create their inventory sheet for when they reopen next, you know, in the fall. And it was very well received. And uh, I was running all over the place. And, mm -hmm. you know, and from a business perspective, you know, we, you know, we're there to help, but obviously it's my time as well. Right. Wow. So I always went, I did a training. I'm, and I'm always a phone call away. Always, always, always. Well, especially when you're having such high volume, you have a lot yeah. of high volume and yeah. yeah. And there, yeah. And there, a lot of them are using them for foods, right. Which is, mm -hmm. So amazing. Um, Kim, anything else on um, that aspect? You're okay? Or you got something going on? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I had to tell Alexa to turn the timer off. Um, okay. Switching Xbox turns. Um, definitely having a champion for sure. The teachers have to have the buy in or whoever it is. Um, so some schools might have like a STEM teacher if that's who you're working with or if it's just the classroom teacher, but knowing like who is keeping track of like ordering, um, who, all of those type of things, you want to like make sure that you're letting them know like, hey, you need more tonic or this, that, or the other thing. Um, so like I have my list of teachers that I'm texting, hey, it's great growing weather right now. Have you thought about getting your tower set up? So that type of thing, because um, I have a lot of schools that grow outdoors here in Arizona. Yeah, and I guess that was kind of a question too. I mean, obviously for the cooler climates, we're growing indoors, but are some of the warmer climates uh, actually keeping their tower gardens outside? So they, they grow typically from October to maybe about like April, they'll start shutting it down um, because May starts getting crazy with the end of the school year. And so they'll, they'll usually grow during October to, to April. Got it. Great. If we're growing outside. Great. I'm just looking through my questions and seeing, just being mindful of time if I'm looking down at Stone Jay. Um, okay. Um, to do, to do, to do. What kind of support do teachers receive that will enhance the learning experiences for their students? Henry can totally answer this, but I want to point out if you buy any other unit, you will never, you will never, mark my words, ever get the support you get with Tower Garden and that it's great food plastic, it's safe, okay, A. Um, I have many more things, but you'll just never get what we, what we offer. Okay, so. and we'll let Henry answer that. What is that? Like, I know that there's a curriculum. Is it a decent curriculum? Do teachers use it? Is it just give them ideas or like, what are your thoughts, Henry? Yeah, so my favorite resource to use is a Facebook group called Tower Garden User Exchange. I'm going to go ahead and type it in the chat so everyone can, um, can access it here. Um, How do you like that yeah. over Tower to Table group? I just asked because Tim Blank is trying to get people out of that group and into Tower to Table. Oh, he is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, That's okay. I won't leave. <laughs> I'm just curious, yeah, why you, Do you love want me to that. put the link in the chat then? Or? Yeah, yeah, tower to table. But no, but tower I mean, yeah, but that's okay. But is it, it, does it have more teachers in it? Is it? It's, that one is, uh, it's basically any gardeners. 
Um, okay. It's 26, almost 27,000 Tower Garden users um, that are part of that group. And it's, there's categories in it by topic. And so you can simply, uh, if you have a question about tomatoes, then you can go to the topic for tomatoes and you can see how to clip them, um, when's the best time to, to harvest them um, or plant them, what types of tomatoes are best for certain temperatures. Um, so I, I really enjoyed yeah. um, the Facebook groups. Yeah, that, that's great. So you, you put your teachers in those groups so that they can also get support there. Okay, awesome, mm -hmm. great idea, great idea. And um, do you, what about uh, the curriculum? Anybody wanna to speak to the curriculum that, that's used it or that, that their schools are using it? My schools use the free curriculum that's on towergarden.com. Um, they access it and use it a lot. And so it gives them the, the first lesson. So it's, it's like pre-K through grade 12 and it will break apart the different lessons. It's not a full like encompassing curriculum that is going to last you every single day for the whole year, but it will give you like different chapters. Um, and it, it kind of like will get you thinking about other ways in which to incorporate the curriculum into the classroom. And so um, it shows them that it's not just science, it's not just math. And so like I've had teachers that use it a lot for ELA and creative writing and they asked kids, so one project that they did was researching the harshest living conditions around the world. And so the kids, there was a list and the kids had to pick which place they uh, were going to research and then they had to solve the problem of how they were going to grow food in this area wow. well the tower garden solved every harsh environment in which a way to grow food um, i have another teacher that uses the tower gardens for ela in that they're doing like photojournalism and so they have a classroom instagram or they have a classroom um, blog or blog whatever the kids are into they're finding creative ways that they're merging their own interests in taking pictures writing about it doing videos and so everyone gets a part in what their strengths are and it's not just sitting there measuring the leaves or adding the tonic it's not it's it's so much more than just building it and like watching the plants grow Got it. Wow. Anybody else want to add to the curriculum? I'm sure Becky in the college, you know, you're not, they're not doing it for cur curriculum. Are they, or what are they doing? How are they using it in college? Well, they were growing. So, you know, I, that was five years ago and nobody in Ottawa, Ontario was growing. So I really, I, there was a lot of death, a lot of growth. That was my training. And when you guys get into, so we talk about restaurants right away, they're going to want to know the yields. And what I ended up doing was I said, you know what, all three of the towers were just growing basil because we know basil is ridiculous and it yields a lot just like lettuce. But this way we were able to say all of the basil coming off of our tower garden is in our tomato sauce at our pasta station because we worked locally with local farms and everything. So it all works synergistically together. Um, but the campus was just huge on sustainability. And that's our generation right now. They, they give a damn, right? And, they, and the tower garden is sustainable. Like, look at the amount of water it does not use. Look at the carbon footprint it barely has, you know? So that's, that's where you go when you're going to colleges or universities, I would say, yeah. it hit on the environmental. Side. So are they, but are they using it? Like, are they using it in a horticultural program to study it and it's read? Literally, it? nope, in, our, in the main dining hall where the wow. kids, pay for their meal plan and but the shop i mean it could be a it could get into it totally yeah yeah totally okay. Yeah. awesome okay i we've got a couple questions i'll get there um i just want to ask one more question that i know has come up um how like in the classroom what's the adaptability now for covid obviously you know less touch our, i know our district anyway is paperless and they don't want things touching and people touching and multiple touches um, so have you guys adapted um, to tower gardens for COVID? Are tower gardens shut down temporarily? If any of you um, who have them in the classrooms want to share. 
So I had, um, with the online school, I had my teachers, um, they either took them home and were growing at home. And so with their virtual learning, they, the kids could still see them. Um, and then I had some teachers that were in the classroom and um, that's where they were shooting their lessons from. And so it was virtual. So yeah. no one was touching it besides the teacher. Um, as they're transitioning back into the classroom, it's, it's still looking a little bit different as far as who, who gets to touch it and, and those like safety procedures. But we've always washed hands before because we talk a lot about this as food and um, you, you have to respect food. Someone's going to eat it. And so before they come into the classroom when I would be there, that's like rule number one is you stop in the bathroom and wash your hands or you wash your hands in the sink. No one touches it without clean hands. And so my schools, we've already adopted that practice. Fabulous. Fabulous. Henry, anything to that? Have you, have you guys adapt? Has there been anything? Um, I think with food, food regulations, uh, with Columbus public city schools, uh, they actually take the produce off that they harvest and put it out into farmers markets. Um, the adjustment that they have to make is they can't do multiple harvests. So they grow a head of lettuce, they take it off, and that, that's it. So they can't do a clipping and then allow it to continue growing. That's one adjustment. Um, very similar to what Kim said. Uh, most of the teachers, uh, and they do this over the summer anyway, they take them home and they grow them at home. And then they can benefit from you know, eating the produce themselves with their families. Um, but they can also zoom into their classrooms and take pictures and uh, they still utilize it and they write it off because they can still, I mean, it's still a, a classroom educational tool. So mm -hmm. it's still the tax deductible. They can still use the grants. Um, it's no different. Fabulous. Okay. And I know that I knew we would go over tonight, but I just want to say, um, have you guys been sharing towers to classrooms during COVID? Have you, like, are people open to it at this time or have you taken, taken a break? I know it takes time to get tower gardens into a classroom. So we don't want to be thinking about immediate results. We want to be thinking about planning for the spring and even possibly next fall sometimes when, when we're on this process, right? So anything to say on that? Um, actually, homeschool has yeah. increased That's, tenfold. Yeah. It's a great way to just start sharing towers. I mean, I had 17 ordered last month. <laughs> I, I still have to get in touch with them, but I'm, it, there's, people are loving them. And yeah. I think people are finally understanding the importance of food security right now so yeah everybody everywhere should have these because we could get into hospitals that's where i'm just like ah oh. well know? i think that was one of the questions um actually that i didn't want to forget just um quick and then we'll we'll finish off was um what mm, sorry <clears throat> in what other educational settings besides schools have you seen tower gardens use i'm gonna um have henry specifically answer this because i know henry you you've had a lot of experience with this Uh, say, say it again. Sorry, I was typing um, and responding yeah. to a message. Yeah, that's okay. In what other educational settings besides in schools have you seen tower gardens being used? Oh, right, right. Okay. Um, so Ronald McDonald House, uh, that was my first outside of the, uh, the school setting. Um, and so, you know, they strictly, well, at, at first they strictly wanted to use it for produce um, for their kitchen, but we turned it into an educational uh, project for the kids. So of course this was pre COVID. Uh, yeah. so we set up, uh, with the news cameras and everything. And, uh, we would go in and the kids would actually built the, the tower with me. Um, and then we set up another time where they planted the seedlings and then another time where they transplanted them in and we made it a lesson, um, over at the, uh, for the Kemper house, which is the Alzheimer's and dementia. We did the same thing. Um, in fact, uh, today we were over there and we started putting in uh, some, uh, we, we generated a couple of different ideas of painter's tape and labeling each of the, the slots with uh, A, B, C, et cetera. And so uh, we're going to use it as an activity to teach texture, um, 
uh, it, it's, it's like a, an engaging kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, just, to, just, just to, to get the residents more interacting um, and not just a pretty thing to look at. Nice. And that, and, uh, that's for the, that was a, what home was that? Did you say a dementia? Yeah, dementia and Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. Wow. So I'm sure just if you guys, you know, um, think of all the different areas, like, you know, retirement living homes, you know, um, shelters or uh, food banks, I've heard of them getting in and um, local food, all these different applications. It really just um, takes, what would you say, just like a leap of faith and just get out there and just share from your heart, right? And just open your mouth or write that first email, just make that connection and just be bold and, and excited. And then you know that you have a community of people um, in our community, in our Tower Garden community that, you know, are here to help support with resources and tools. Um, tell us more about the fire department, Jennifer says. I didn't, I must have missed the fire department. Anybody? So I, I mentioned fire department. I don't pers personally have them in, uh, in fire departments yet. I've been talking to two different districts, um, but Houston has them in their fire departments. Okay. So if anyone knows any reps down there in Houston. <laughs> well, that makes sense because they're doing a lot of cooking all the time. We have a lot of firefighter friends and they cook a lot. And so that could be a real, and they want to eat healthy. That could be a really great. So first step would be then is connect with a firefighter friend. I will totally. <laughs> yes, you will. For all the wrong reasons. Just kidding. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm joking. <laughs> all right. So, um, all right, guys, I'm just uh, so grateful and so thankful that the three of you were on tonight helping us uh, learn and navigate and maybe just, um, helping us take a not so, or what seems like a scary step may, may not feel so scary now. Cause we, I'm the type of person, unless I have all the information and understand processes, I don't generally make a move. So for people like me, um, blueprints, <laughs> this was very, very, very helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.